Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division in the Gridiron Tournament. The video here is sponsored by Gold Clash and Playdemic, so let's go! Do not forget that you can check down in the video description to get direct timestamp for the specific holes in this playthrough. So, if you don't want to watch hole number 1, then just jump to hole number 5 for example. Also, check out patreon.com slash goldclashtommy. There you will be able to be able to sign up for text guide packages for specific tours, shootouts, tournament you name it also i do offer training session package for those that will improve their game and have one-on-one -on -one sessions with me so hole number one part five very easy part five and here's a very uh, like very easy it's an easy part five we need to just make sure that we give ourselves uh, the possibility to go for the green in two so instead of uh, trying to play as close to the left there as possible i would say like this Play with whatever ball you like. Uh, I would suggest that you play with a quarterback. A quarterback would give you uh, accuracy. It will give you a better ball guideline than the extra mile level 5 here will do. So I'm going to aim up and I'm going to aim for the spot there. You can see there, like, uh, hard for me to explain, but you're going to see where I mean, I mean here. You can see we bounce and now we're coming way right, but you can see this little uh, path here with a little bit further far away. Uh, and put yourself in here, then we're going to have a, uh, have a very nice wood club towards the pin. So if you're playing with a special ball, like for an example you play with a Quasar, Katana, Titan or whatever, then you of course using side spin to the left all the time. Because the east, like the more side spin you're having to left, the easier it's going to be for you to compensate for a great shot. And this is enough, you don't have to push it hard like that if you don't want to. For those of you that play in Rookie with some higher level clubs, then you can use a power 3 ball and you can basically drive over the complete rough if we do have Chailwind. But, you know, then you maybe should be playing in Pro instead. So, now we have a second shot and we're going to play with the Viper. And the Viper here is a good club to use as it's going to give ourselves, uh, yeah, as we do have the Sniper in like level 1, the Viper level 4 is actually going to be better. Going to go with max backspin, which is 2.5 bar backspin, and you can see here now, this the Santa Ventura courses are pretty bright, so it is sometimes hard to see the ball guideline completely here. And we're going to aim up straight at the pin for the second bounce to be just on top of the fringe. And you're going to notice that I under adjust this shot a little bit. But this shot here is a very good opportunity. So elevation adjustment. Drive 10% second shot. I'm not adding anything. So it, this one is coming in nicely here. Coming in a little bit hot and roll past the pin. So let's go to hole number two. Hole number two is a par four. And here we're going to go for the green. We're going to go for the green. And it doesn't look like we can reach the green, but yeah, we can most certainly do. And this is a, what can I say, this is a par 4 where we really need to pay attention to the extended and the compressed ball guideline. So, for an example, if we do have chain win, then we need to visualize that the ball is going to bounce a little bit further than normal. As the ball is having a different speed hitting the ground, therefore going to bounce longer. And the same with headwind, it's going to bounce shorter, as for the ball is going to stop sooner when it hits the ground. So, I'm playing here with an extra mile level 5, and I'm going to change to play with a power 3 ball to give myself the most distance as possible. Max side spin, you can see I'm playing with 2 bars of backspin, at least I'm aiming up with 2 bars of backspin. Take a look at the ball guy line now. The ball guy line is showing that I'm going to hit the bunker, and this is the perfect spot. I shouldn't be doing anything else here. But the thing that I do is that I'm too afraid for the ball to get into the sand that I stretch up basically one ring and then adjust there. Because I do want to see that the ball guideline is going to bounce over the bunker. But I don't pay attention to that this ball is actually going to bounce over the bunker anyway. Because it has some tailwind and has an extended ball guideline that we need to account for. So look how far I bounce. I bounce into the green. And therefore roll into the bunker. Very important to have that in mind. And I'm of course going to explain that more when it comes to the tournament. If we do get Tailwind. So now we get into the sand. A possibility to make it for sure. But it would be so much nicer to be on the green. Hole number 3. Par, par 3. And as for the, the 2 out of 3 par 3s that we're playing this tournament. It's a very tough one. 
So, and when you play from front T in rookie division here, then you will be finding yourself in between clubs when you do the rough bump with basically any type of win. You might going to be okay with some sort of crosswind, but if we just risk being in, be in between clubs, then I'm not going to play rough bump. Then I'm going to play the fairway bump. Our opponent's using one bar of top spin and having a hard time to find the spot where he or she is going to aim for. And the reason this is going to be a tough one is like, first and foremost, we do need to adjust our shot for being downhill when we are aiming for this point. It's like we are aiming for a lower point on the fairway, which means that we're going to play downhill. So we do need to over adjust with 10%. If we would be going for the rough bump, then we would be aiming for a higher point. Then we wouldn't be needed to do any over adjustment. Then it's almost that we're playing it uphill instead. So the thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to aim for the fairway two and a half bar top spin. And then we're going to aim for the ball. You can see the second bounce is going to be basically like one third into the green, like a little bit more, like, like what will it be? Like one third into the green, I would say. Straight at the pin. And then we're going to adjust our shot here for max distance with a 10% over adjustment. I'm not using any side spin here. And the only thing that I want to make sure is that the ball is bounced up to the green nicely. We bounce, second bounce makes the speed come here and it's very important here for us to use some, very important for us to use topspin when we do have headwind and when we have crosswind we use a little bit less and if we have tailwind we don't use any topspin at all. But it's always nice to make a hole in one but th that would be my position when I play in rookie. If not the wind is absolutely perfect to make the rough bump. Now, hole number four, another part four where we will tailwind can go for the green. So I'm going to aim here over the water. So I'm going to first over adjust my drive with 10%. I'm stretching it up to visualize now that I want to have a bounce a little bit further ahead. Max top spin, which is four and a half bar with max side spin to the right. Half a ball of curl to the right as, as well. And also a tiny bit of overpower. So you can see we bounce very nicely and the second bounce Third bounce in the rough and we roll out. That's of course the ultimate situation. Sometimes we're going to miss this shot and put ourselves in the rough or in the sand. But that's okay. Because it's often going to be a very short one. And still a possibility for us to drop. If we in that case um, would be hitting it perfect from the rough or from the sand. But. But 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 many buts. <laughs> uh, is that when we do have this type of wind. We need to go for the pin. We cannot play up safe on the right because okay, we can, but we're taking away a huge opportunity for a reward by making that shot. So you really just need to pay attention to the adjustment. And if we do have tailwind, we're going to see players go for the green every single time. And if you play up to the right, this is going to be a much harder shot to sink than I believe a short rough iron or a short sandwich is going to be. Therefore, I pick going for the green with the, this type of wind. We take the eagle there and go over to the next hole, which is a part five. I would for also say for hole number four there, if we do have a headwind or crosswind, then we're kind of forced to play on the right side. So we're just going to hope that we do get some tailwind in the tournament. But if otherwise, it's not going to be a problem. We're still going to play right side and then you pack clubs with backspin. Now, hole number five. And hole number five is a part five, a very tough part five from the Santa Ventura. Here we do need one thing, it's curl. It's not that often we are, it's crucial to have curl, but here it's be better to play with a quarterback in a lower level than playing with an extra mile in a lower level. Because playing with an extra mile level four here, for an example, even if I use a quasar with a side spin here, I'm going to have a very hard time to get enough curl to put myself enough to the top of the left that I do want to. So I'm using one bar top spin, max side spin, and I'm going to go max curl with my extra mile level four. And you know, I know I I don't I don't like this uh, this currency only half a ball. I would like to have one ball or maybe one and a half ball of curl to the left. Therefore, the quarterback is a better club. 
and we also want to gain and, uh, and be able to play with more topspin and I can only play with one bar topspin because otherwise I would be for to 100% drop into the sand now I at least have a chance but you can see how much I would struggle if I picked the wrong clubs so we get it over there and also for the ball part I would suggest that you play with a power 3 ball and if you do have a bunch of kingmakers play with a kingmaker otherwise be you will be okay with a titan but I do want you to have as much side spin as possible to get with distance if that is possible now second shot we do need distance here i play with a big dog you can see even though we made a drive on the fairway we do need to come in more to the left and we also need to have more distance so like the ball and club selection here has been worthless and therefore it's also good to show a guide with that how how important it is to pick the right setup for the tournament that could basically make it or break it and now I basically have to wing it a little bit. I play with two and a half bar top spin. I'm going with way too much overpower. And also the curl to uh, put myself around the trees. Very tough shot. And I'm not surprised I'm going to get into bunk uh, into the uh, into the rough here. So that's of course unfortunate, you know. Uh, but this is a very tough part five. Very tough part five. And again, the drive important. Elevation drive ten percent. Then for the second, 10% downhill. For the second shot, we're going to play 10% uphill. So we're going to take away 10% as the ball is going to be less affected by the wind. So the ball, our opponent here gets into the rough, unfortunately. And now for us here, from the uh, rough here you can see it's possible to sink it but you know it's a tough one it's a tough one so again hole five pick the right clubs uh, and don't be so controlled by the clubs that you normally use i know i'm way for using the clubs that you feel comfortable with but this is a time where you need to choose a club with more curl for the drive otherwise you are not I'm going to make an eagle many times on this hole. So let's go to hole number six, part three. Also a tough part three, and the reason this is a tough part three is that it's very tough to get a consistent bounce on this one. And with this type of wind, and also with the clubs that we're having in rookie, then I'm going to play in the middle, as playing on the side in headwind. Is going to get, put myself in between clubs if I'm using like a basic ball or a Marlin. And I don't want to spend a Titan or a Kingmaker or this, on this part 3. So we're playing with a backbone with a Marlin ball here. The reason I'm playing with a Marlin ball is to give myself a little bit of side spin to the right. so Or like to the left as well. So I can uh, give myself a little bit extra push here if needed. I'm playing with one bar backspin. And one bar backspin is too much. One bar backspin is perfect if we would be having some tailwind and also crosswind. But if we do have uh, uh, if we do have headwind here, then we cannot use one bar backspin. And once again, that is due to the compressed ball guideline. And when we bounce in headwind, then the ball is going to stop sooner than it what it shows. We also need to over adjust our shot for being ten percent extra on this part three, as it's. Uh, working for downhill numbers hole number six par four tough par four now we're gonna come to a couple of like hole five six seven also uh, five six seven nine is going to be all of them is going to be very tough there is not that much room for mistakes here i play here with a titan and i'm playing with the max side spin and one bar backspin when i'm having um, when I have a tailwind, sorry, I'm not playing with one um, with one bar top. Did I say top spin? I meant I meant one bar backspin at least. I think I said backspin. I don't know, but max side spin to the right as well as the ball is going to have a natural push from the fairway to the left. Then we need to compensate for that by having side spin to the right. We do need to over adjust this shot. Not much. Five percent is enough. So we just have to make a tiny bit of over adjustment here. If you would be having crosswind, then you go with half a bar of backspin or without backspin. 
and in headwind then you go without uh, without backspin completely and you can see there our opponent went left that looks like an easier drive and it is an easier drive but the second shot is getting so tough that it, now of course I'm visualizing that it would be on fairway that I would say it's not impossible but very very hard to get the eagle if you go on the fairway there to the left that is why I play a more aggressive drive playing myself over to the right so I do have an opportunity to bounce myself for the eagle but if you don't feel comfortable hitting that tiny area you maybe don't feel comfortable with your wind adjustment or you maybe are, are just not feeling comfortable on hitting the ball perfect then I would say it's very important for you to play left side instead lay up and then just put yourself on the green so you can pot it in for a birdie and just take the birdie this is a par 4 where many players will drop a shot i will promise you that and using one and a half bar backspin i would be going with two once again we do have the compre the extended ball guideline to uh, play with there and therefore we're coming in a little bit hot and of course great shot right will not it's not going to help Hole number 8, this is the easiest hole in the tournament, I would say. Uh, one of the easier part 3s in the whole game. As now this green has been changed a little bit, so it's a little bit bumpier. Uh, but it works the same. The right side will let the ball fall down towards the pin. One and a half bar backspin with a long iron, aiming with the, the blue ring. Uh, just slightly down in the sand. It's a good reference to go with. It's so many different ways to play this hole that I'm. it's almost that I'm going to let you decide how you want to play it. Because you can play it with more backspin, aim further ahead. You can play it with um, top spin and play it further back down. The ball is... The, the important part here to have in mind is that the ball will fall down towards the pin. And you're going to have a very easy birdie putt at least, but a possible hole in one. For the tee shot, we do need to make an over adjustment of 10%. That's also very important, especially if you have a higher type of wind. I'm not sure if we're going to. We're not going to have higher than five, six miles per hour. But five, six miles per hour, then of course, is going to uh, affect our flight path if we're not adjusting it properly for the 10% extra. So, our opponent gets to the green here again, going to roll and going to come in a little bit high and still going to fall down and stay nicely and have a, no problem to make a birdie. Last but not least, we're going to play hole number 9. Hole number 9 is uh, one, of the, uh, one of the unit per point. And from rookie tee, like from front tee, it's going to be a tougher, a tough one in my opinion. You can see I'm playing here uh, with a Marlin. The reason I play with a Marlin is that I do have a too high upgraded clubs. And before people are commenting about, oh, Tommy's playing with an X mile level 7, you can play this shot the same way to achieve the same type of distance if you play with an X mile level 3, level 4 with a Titan ball. And I want you to play with a power 3 ball every single time. Max top spin, max side spin to the right. And then you need to aim and adjust for 20% over adjustment with your drive. And bounce over. And of course, it's not ultimate to show with an XMI level 7 in rookie. But I don't have any choice. As uh, I... Yeah, I don't have any choice because I don't have more accounts to find it on. We got it over the rough. And something to have in mind as well is that the top spin level is important if you do have less than four and a half bar top spin then you might need to change the driver to a driver that give that gives you more and that gives you more top spin it could be that you have to change to a big topper but if you change to a big topper with more top spin as you lose distance then you need to change ball as well and maybe play with a berserker so you gain more distance there as well i'm not saying the big topper and berserker play here is bad in rookie but a berserker ball is not that frequently common if you're playing rookie and therefore it's it would be stupid for me to see as that as well so we get into like a situation where we just need to make sure that we're having enough topspin to bounce over the uh, the rough or at least bounce in the rough to roll out we and as i said 20 percent over adjustment second shot here now we need to make sure that we do uh, 
put ourselves away from the right side as much as possible. So you use as much side spin to the right. I would also suggest to use like three to five bars of backspin, depending on how many backspin bars you have on your club. And then you aim up. And then you take your shot. I will play this one as a downhill shot, so I will over adjust this one with 10%. You can see we're coming in here, but you can see the green it falls down to the left, so this is a very tough one to get in the hole. So we should be happy with an eagle. The thing that I would like to do is to go with, like, aim more to the left so you can use more curl. That's the only way for us here to get in the hole without dangering the rough and the sand to the right there too much but once again we do have some tough holes in this tournament i believe we're going to see a score that is going to be in rookie around minus 26 27 for the win maybe 25 24 in some brackets as well we'll see but i don't think it's going to be that much lower if you do have any questions about any of the holes and about the game in general and or about the tournament in general make sure that you make a comment in the comment section below check out patreon.com slash golf clash tommy also don't forget to subscribe to the channel the video here is sponsored by golf clash and play good luck in the grid iron tournament